which we agree. Alaka has got three meanings: a congealed clot of blood, something which clings, and a leech-like substance. And Prophet Keith Moore was shown this verse of the Quran. He goes under a microscope. He says, "I don't know. It looks like a leech." He observed the early stages of embryo in a microscope and compared it with a photograph of a leech, and he was shocked at the striking exact resemblance. So today, medical science confirms that the embryo looks like a leech. But his argument is, you have to take the meaning what was prevalent that time, not today. And he gives the example that Quran says, and the Bible says, don't have pig. But today in America, pig also refers to a policeman. So would you say Quran says don't eat a policeman? And the people started to laugh. I couldn't say anything because he was speaking. I have to follow the rule. But my turn came to speak, and I said, "What Dr. William Campbell says is correct as far as the Bible is concerned, because the injury was revealed only for that time and for those people. So whatever meaning was revealed in that time, you have to take. But the Quran was not revealed only for the Muslims or the Arabs, only for that time. It was revealed for the whole of humanity until eternity. So you have to take all the meanings from the time of revelation." Till the day of judgment, all the meaning should be taken into consideration. Can be one is correct, can be all are correct. And this William Campbell, he's practiced in Morocco. He even knows Arabic as a language. So, doctor, medical doctor, MD. I am only MBBS. He's better than me. MD, PhD in writing a book against the Quran. Knows Arabic language. I don't know Arabic as a language. So we had a debate. So I said. As far as the Bible is concerned, fine. Only the meaning where it is revealed has to be taken. For the Quran, all the meanings. And what meaning is today? He has no objection because Prophet Keith Moore, who is one of the highest authority at that time in the field of embryology, he confirmed and wrote in his new edition that the embryo looks like a leech. So he cannot object. But we also know that the second meaning, it clings. Something which clings is correct because the embryo clings to the uterine wall. The latest research also says that in the initial stages, in the embryo, the blood does not circulate, so it looks like a congealed clot. So even the congealed clot is correct, which science has testified today. What the Quran says that it made from a congealed clot, by appearance, it looks like a congealed clot. By function, it clings to the uterine wall, and by shape, it even looks like a leech. So, Alhamdulillah, all three are correct. Even kanjil clot is correct. Even something which clings, as well as leech-like substance. Hope that answers the question. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir. My name is Hema. I'm a revert to Islam. First of all, I have been in Dubai for 18 years. It's the first time that I have heard the true meaning of jihad. I mean, I must say most of the Muslims don't know. I'm sorry. My question is: Is there a limit, an upper limit, or an extent mentioned in Quran that you can go to in order to fulfill your jihad? Sister Masha has accepted Islam, the religion of peace, and I welcome her and congratulate her. Thank you. And she agrees that she did not know the real meaning of jihad, which she has come to know today. Alhamdulillah. She says that what is the upper limit a person can go to fulfill the level of jihad? Sister, the best jihad, highest level, is jihad against your own self, jihad for nafs, highest level. <laughs> And you can go to any level which Quran gives permission. You should not break the Sharia. Whatever you can go, the highest level, but within the purview of the Islamic Sharia. You can't go outside the purview of the Islamic Sharia. So the best jihad is jihad against your own nafs. And for example, we have the. Example in the life of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. You have the revelations at the time which was revealed during the time of Makkah, called as Makki surahs. We have the examples of Madni surahs. The major difference is Makki surahs are more talking about iman and strengthening, etc. And the Madni surah, how to establish the deen, akamat the deen about jihad. We know that in Madina, when the Muslims became more powerful compared to before. There was war, etc. Talking about jihad, etc. Talking about the kital, fighting of war. But the jihad that was done at the time of Makkah, when the mushriks of Makkah, when they tortured and killed many of the Muslims, there were people who could fight. 
that Hazrat Hamza, may Allah be pleased with him. Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. They wanted to retaliate. They were warriors. But the Prophet said, do sabr. Sabr was the jihad. If you have the power to fight back and you hit back, it is good. You have the power to hit back and you're told to do sabr and you don't hit back, that is a higher level of jihad. The people wanted to say, who are these people killing my brother? I want to fight back, I have the power. He was called as the lion of the desert. People used to fear him. But the Prophet said, you have no permission. So his jihad was controlling himself, sabr. So the jihad keeps on changing in different times. Jihad, sister, doesn't mean only going in the battlefield. That's one type of jihad. And Hazrat Aisha, an, the wife of the Prophet, she asked the Prophet that should we go for jihad talking about going to fight in war? Prophet said it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, poem number four, hadith number 2784. The Prophet said, the best jihad for you is to perform a perfect hajj. Hajj was the best jihad for Hazrat Aisha Radilawan. Another time it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, a person asked the Prophet that should he go for jihad, talking about the qital, fighting. The Prophet said, do you have parents? He said, yes. The best jihad for you is to serve your parents. So the best jihad keeps on changing depending upon the situation. The other time it mentioned Sunan Nisai, the Prophet said, to speak a word of truth against a tyrant ruler is the best form of jihad. That doesn't mean that for everyone serving the parents is the best form of jihad. Because the Prophet knew that his parents required him. So depending upon the time, sister, the best type of jihad keeps on changing. And what is the best level you can go? You can sacrifice whatever you can. And during one of the kitals, one of the jihad, Prophet asked the sahabas, whatever maximum you can give, you give in charity for the kital. And very famous hadith. Hadith Umar radiallahu he was a very rich, very rich person he was. He bought half the wealth and he gave to the Prophet. And he said that, MashaAllah, I have given half my wealth. And he thought that he was the highest, indicating that he will get the best of reward. Isn't he the best? The Prophet replied, Hazrat Abu Bakr, the first Khalif Islam, an, he gave his full wealth. So he will get a better reward than Hazrat Umar. In terms of quantity, the wealth that Hazrat Abu Bakr Radilawan gave was a very less compared to the wealth given by Hazrat Umar Radilawan. But the percentage he gave was 100%. So the sawab that he will get will be much more than Hazrat Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. So he gave everything of his wealth. He'll get a better reward. So whatever permission Allah gives you in the Sharia, you can go to that extent for performing jihad. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Jazakallah. Now I would ask the questioners to note, we'd have one question on the slip and one on the question mic. Again on the slip, again on the question mic and so on. The next question from the slip, from Brother Rizwan Ali Khan. Suicide bombing in the light of Islam, how justified it is in Iraq or any part of the world? As far as suicide bombing is concerned, most of the well-known scholars, Sheikh Nasir Dalbani, Sheikh Bin Baz, Sheikh Utaimi, all were three great scholars, may Allah have mercy on them, Rahimullah, that they have given the fatwa that suicide bombing per se is haram. It is haram. But there are other scholars like Sheikh Safar al-Hawali, like Sheikh Salman Auda. They have different views. But you should realize that the term suicide bombing per se, committing suicide in Islam is haram. There's no two doubt about it. But as far as suicide bombing is concerned, the scholars differ. What they say that the word suicide is a misnomer. It's a misnomer. In suicide, a person is fed up of his life and he wants to end his life. In this, they say it is a strategy of war. The main intention is to cause loss to the enemy and while doing that there are high chances that they will die so therefore it's a strategy of war which scholars like salman auda say it is right but it does not mean that any muslim wakes up in the morning and ties a bomb and goes 
most of the scholars